I love, Carl, the acuity of your global essay this weekend where you focus on Q4. Where is our economy October 1 on? What level do you have? Well, you know, we don't have a level. And the reason that we don't have a level is that uh, we don't really know what the pandemic is going to do, what's going to happen with coronavirus. What we do know is that the third quarter got a boost because in every country around the world, the GDP growth, I mean, we're looking at figures like 52 percent growth for Germany, 57 percent, I'm sorry, 29 percent for Germany, 57 percent for the Eurozone, 63 percent for France. But it's an illusion because the base was so low, and that's a windfall for third quarter growth. The fourth quarter won't have that windfall, and we could see flat or worse, depending on how uh, the months work out. We, the indication this morning from Germany is that it's already starting to fizzle a little bit over there with the business climate yeah. index down. Yeah. Uh, so it's a reason to be worried about Q4. I mean, with the, with the political moment that we're in, usually, ex-pandemic, we're worried about what's the run rate of GDP. Is it under 2 percent? Can you be that grim, or is it actually more constructive? Well, in the United States, uh, we think that there's a rebound in progress, and barring uh, uh, barring a, a resurgence of the of the virus, we would have said something around two or three percent is possible, which might have gotten us back to where we were before the lockdowns, maybe over the course of three or four or five years. But with this new third wave in the United States, second wave in Europe out there, we really can't predict what's going to happen because the virus can just shut everything down. Not because of government lockdowns, but just because people can't or won't go to work. They have to stay home for child care. Their factory is shut because somebody else got sick. Um, there's, there's a no, number of ways in which the infection infects the economy. And that's what we're worried about right now. Not a formal lockdown as much as an unwanted, undesired shutdown of economic activity as the coronavirus spreads again. So, Carl, are we looking, and good morning from London, are we looking now at a double dip recession? And do, will the markets care, or will they just focus on what central banks and fiscal policy can do? Well, the chart may call it a double dip, but it's all the same recession. It's all the same uh, thing. Uh, you know, we, the shock is that people can't get to work because they're sick or they're locked down or both. It's a supply shock compounded by a demand shock when they come down. Just because the quarterly numbers go up and down on the basis of mass, when we look at charts of the level of things, it's pretty clear what's happening. And we have a lot of them in our weekly notes on the global economy today. We look at the levels. And the direction of the levels is down, now with a little bit of a bounce. And now on all the monthly charts, we're starting to see a little tail downward on indicators that we trust, like the IFO index out this morning, uh, other survey data from other countries. Uh, so we're concerned that we're, we're seeing kind of a dead cat bounce, if you will, off the bottom, and that uh, with the new rise in infections, that things can only get worse from here. So get worse, what does it mean for where you put your money? Do you buy gold? Do you buy havens? Yeah, so first of all, by get worse, I mean that I think that, that April was uh, the incompressible low point of the economy. And I think that we're headed back to those levels again on the, 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 the back of this new wave. So where do you put your money? That's a good question because you're starting to run out of opportunities. Uh, we're going to see, I think, this week as GDP numbers start to come out for a number of countries, a burst of optimism in the stock market that's going to take it to new highs, uh, going to bolster investor confidence. Everybody's going to say, boy, 20, 30 percent GDP growth. That's terrific. We got to buy stocks. But then as the fourth quarter emerges and as things start to go into crash mode again, then I think we're going to see a sharp reversal. You know, I think uh, we don't give investment advice at high frequency economics, uh, but I think the equity market is in for a very wild ride from here. I think that bond yields <clears throat> really are going to stay about where they are, if anything, go even a little bit lower, a little bit more negative in Europe on the basis of more negative economic information coming out there.